Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Dig Your Way Out by Borderline Editions. This game plays 2-6 to six players, takes about 45 minutes to play, and is for ages 16 and up. And in the game Dig Your Way Out, you are playing as a prison inmate attempting to dig your way out of your cell block. You are going to start the game with a character, a certain number of Dig Your Way Out cards, and you're going to be going through the different locations in the prison, attempting to gather and collect resources, turn them in for cigarettes, use them to buy certain tools to either shiv your opponents or use them to buy tools to dig your way out. You'll be returning those tools to your cell block, utilizing them and trying to get a certain number of points. There are two game modes to the game and a variant with an extra AI character. One is the main one which plays two to six players and you just kind of try and get the most resources and dig your way out. And the other one is a team mode where you're playing either 2v2 or 3v3 where you have your own team and your own cell block, you all working together to dig your way out and only one team will win or one player will win in the other variant. And that's the basic idea of the gang. Game. Speaking of gangs, join one of those guys. You can join your own gang of your own choice based on what your character wants you to do based on these cards here. Or if you want, you can join your allies gang, which you can use in the team variant of the game as well. Uh, additionally, there's going to be unique specific things you can do when joining gangs, which is very nice. And you have to do that in order to join them, you have to spend certain resources you get along the way in prison. That's the basic idea of the game. I'll talk about how to set it up, how to play, and of course our review. Setup for the game is very easy. Do you want to play the team mode or the regular mode? The team mode is going to have two separate prison blocks for team A and B, and the other side of the board is going to have one cell block where each person is going to have their own unique prison cell. Uh, in the team variant of the game, the only difference in setup is you're going to separate your teams from A and B and uh, put them in their own cell blocks based on whatever team it is they're playing on. Everything else is basically the same. In the main game mode for the game, you'll set the board up, you'll place your prison inmates in their cell blocks, you'll take all the spoon cards and place them inside the mess hall, and then you're going to take the shivs, the pickaxes, and the shovels and place them in the yard. Also, you'll take the rest of the Dig Your Way Out cards, shuffle them and place them on the space indicated on the board, and each of the different types of gangs you can join in prison are going to be included, in which case you'll shuffle them and you'll place them down on the respective areas associated on the board as well. You'll take these background cards, you'll shuffle them up and deal one to each player. These are one-time use abilities that players can take um, in the game on their turn, and if they join a specific gang, they can get a bonus specific action. There's some machines Michelle and Michelle cards, which are the variant of the game where you can play with an AI character that goes around brutalizing you. And if you don't want to play this mode, you can set it aside along with the two specific characters, Michelle and Michelle. Otherwise, each player is going to gather themselves a player board and three Dig Your Way Out cards, as well as a character. Everything else, tokens and die, are going to be set aside. And anything that you do not need, such as extra characters and extra character boards, can be removed from the game. After that, you're ready to go. Playing the main variant of the game is fairly simple. On your turn, you're going to get two actions, and you can use any of those actions however you would like, and you can use the same action twice if you would like. First action is to move, and there's multiple ways to move. The first way is you roll the die, and then you move to a space that isn't the one you started in based on the die number. So if I rolled a, for instance, three, I would be able to move my character to any of the spots that have a three on them. In the team variant of the game, there's actually going to be an extra prison block, so you'll be able to move to the adjacent one, or you can just simply go to the specific location that is indicated on the die, which in this case is going to be the hospital space. Um, you will also be able to move with both your actions. So you can take both actions to move literally anywhere you want to avoid having to roll the die to go to a random location. And finally, if you're playing the team variant of the game, you can simply move to a location that your teammates share, provided they are the same gang as you. So for instance, if you are part of the biker gang and your friend or ally, Callie, is also part of the biker gang, you can go to their space and because they're in the same gang. However, if you also have John as part of your group or team, but they are not in your gang, you cannot move to their space for an action. Another action that you can go ahead and take is drawing Dig Your Way Out cards. Each space has an indicated number of cards that you can draw. So, for instance, if you're in your cell block, you can draw one. If you're in the yard, you can draw two. And if you're in the showers, you can draw three. You'll just take them from this deck here, and your maximum hand size is ten. 
Another thing you can do is craft. Certain locations will let you craft, others with the no crafting symbol will not. To craft, you'll simply take your cards from hand and you will take the specific associated card you are crafting. So for instance, if you have a blue and an orange card, you can get a pickaxe. And if you have a blue and a purple card, you can get a shovel. And mainly you're gonna be crafting wherever it allows you to do so because you need those cards in order to win the game. Another thing that you can choose to do is dig, but you can only dig in your own cell block. Digging requires an action. It allows you to take one of the cards, uh, like a spoon, a shovel, or a pickaxe, and place it in next to your player board. And you'll get that number of points. It's kind of secured for you, because in certain game modes, you require a certain number of points. So for instance, maybe you require, I don't know, we'll just say 10 points. If you dig with a shovel, that will give you three, which means you only need seven more points in order to win the game. Other actions include buying and uh, selling things. Uh, you can buy things with cigarettes when you're in the yard. So if you have cigarettes, you can buy things like the uh, shovel, pickaxe, and the shivs. And if you want, you might get certain cards in your hand that you can sell that are gonna have a cigarette value on them. Like for instance, this roll of tape is gonna be worth a cigarette. So you could trade this in as well as any other number of cards to get cigarettes that you can then use to buy certain things in the game. Um, there's some other actions as well, like you can go ahead and heal yourself at a hospital space and you can of course gather a spoon at the kitchen, which you can then bring back to dig with. Um, and then in the team mode variant, you are able to trade any number of cards and or uh, cigarettes with a player that is on, uh, on your same space that is in your team or uh, trying to dig their way out with you. So as an action, you can say, I'm gonna give you my five cigarettes and I want you to give me that hat so that I can join, uh, I don't know, the specific uh, cartel gang that you are currently in so we can work together in a better way. Um, and then another action is to extort. Extorting is pretty cool. It's like the combat of the game. How it works is if you are in the same place as another player, uh, that is not on your team, of course, if you're playing the team variant, you can drop down a shiv and you can say, I want your shovel or pickaxe or I want your knife or spoon. And then if they give it to you, all is fair. You've discarded your weapon, you gain that new item. However, if they want, they can attempt to fight back. Um, or if they do not have the item that you want, they will have to fight back they will play a card in, 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 uh, in turn order. So I say, I want this thing. They say, I don't want to give it to you um, or I don't have it, in which case they'll play their shiv and then you can play your shiv and vice versa until somebody ends up not having or not wanting to play an, uh, one of those item cards. And then the person who's getting extorted is going to, uh, or the person who loses, will lose a random card from their hand and take a beating. Beatings will change the flow of the game, and it tells you on your player board uh, what happens. You can't craft if you have one beating, and if you've taken two beatings, you can't craft or dig, meaning you can't win the game. To, in order to uh, relieve yourself of these beatings, you'll have to go to the hospital space and use an action, or there might be certain dig your way out cards that will let you gain those, as well as background cards that will let you get rid of these tokens as you go along. And that's mainly how attacking works in the game. And of course, you have to be in the same space to trade just as well as you have to be in the same space to attack. And in the team variant mode, if you are playing um, with your friend or ally and somebody comes in and you want to extort them, you both can work together to extort them by playing cards and vice versa. If they have a defender there as well, that defender can help defend them when being extorted. And so that's how the game works. I'll take two actions, any of those actions that I want. I'll pass my turn and the next player is going to go and take those two actions that they want and moving back and forth until somebody or some team reaches the coveted number of dig tokens or dig number to escape. And as soon as that happened, the game is over. So they'll go, one, I'm going to move over here, and I rolled the, the two, and okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn cards in to get this shovel here. I'm then going to go back here, and I'm going to go ahead and dig, turning this three in. Now I need less to, uh, numbered in order to win the game. And that's the idea of the game. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. There's, of course, a couple of nuances as far as the different types of gangs and what actions they'll let you do, as well as your backgrounds and how they work. But for the most part, that's how you play the game, dig your way out. So we played this on stream and off stream. We did the team mode variant and the regular mode variant. Um, and we had a good time with this one here. Uh, you are playing in the solo mode, uh, trying to do the best, most selfish a actions you can. Uh, a lot of times you're gonna wanna extort people. They work really hard to get the items that they need. You take it from them really easily and bring it back to your cell block and use it, protecting that item from being used again once you dig with it. Or you can work meticulously avoiding the other prison inmates, attempting to gather the items that you need going to certain spaces, acquiring more, and bringing them back. You can bring one at a time, you can hold a bunch in your hand and bring them back, 
but of course you have to always be aware that you can be extorted at any moment in time. There's certain unique gangs that you can join and it all they tell you the symbols of the type of cards that are required for you to join the game and gang and how many of them that you need on the board as well as in the rule book. And if you have those certain cards, you can use an action to do that and in order to gain this specific uh, benefit. This one here says during your turn as an action, you can draw and discard immediately three search cards, win and uh, and win their cigarette value. So it kind of gives you new actions, new ways to play, it gives you nice passive bonuses or nice defensive things. Sometimes it'll say whenever a person extorts you, you can look at their hand before choosing between cooperating or fighting. That's really nice as well. So you can kind of give yourself kind of an edge uh, over the competition, as well as of course in the team mode variant, allowing yourself to have the benefit of moving to your friendly gang members' locations without having to use both actions to do so. All the characters are unique and different, and I wouldn't say they're beautiful, but maybe some of them. I think they're just mainly um, a little rough around the edges. <laughs> they're uh, they're going to be prison inmates. Uh, there is a wide variety of them, and the artwork is really, really well done. I enjoy playing with Juan here. She's my personal favorite. She's an old lady. <laughs> Whereas you could play with a big, strong brute of a person. You can play There's just a whole bunch of people here. The prison looks like a prison. It looks like you're moving through different locations, and each location provides you with certain things that you might need. The best location is probably the yard, but it's also the most fought after location. Uh, most times people are spent here are going to be either extorting, crafting, selling and buying cigarettes. It's just a whole bunch of stuff that goes on, which kind of reminds me of what a prison movie at least would look like. I've never been to prison, but I feel like that's probably what goes on in the yard, being able to do stuff like playing cards and buying and selling things. And of course, turning things into be in a gang, basically working and cooperating with people in order to get what you need, in order to successfully be part of a group of individuals. And each of them gives you unique benefits, but they're all different. And each card has different uh, values to them. You're, for this one here, it's the, as an action, you can do the search thing. And then bam, here's a new one, but it's the same gang. And this one says you can make a simple move. And if it's a result of an even, you get two free cigarettes. Or if you don't have a cigarette token, you gain two. If you don't have any cigarette tokens, you gain two. Um, otherwise, you gain one every turn at the end of your turn. And so each of these gang cards is unique and is different, and uh, it's still part of the same gang. So you're going to have a ton of variety of ability in this game as far as what gangs you get and what games you're going to be a part of, which is really, really nice. The cigarette tokens, these are great. They look great. They feel great. <laughs> I actually really like the currency in this game, and it makes sense. It reminds me of the movie Rounders, in which they're selling, uh, they're trading cigarettes while they're playing poker and whatnot. And so I feel like that's a really cool idea for currency. Uh, the Diggy Raker cards can range. They can be worth a ton of cigarettes. They can be cards you get for a gang. There's action cards, so you can actually play a card as an action. Um, and they all vary. They're all very different. Sometimes they're cards that you can either turn in for cigarettes or you can use to craft items that will help you in the game. Um, sometimes you can make people go to solitary confinement, not, not allowing them to progress their game. And solitary is basically going to allow them to only do one action while they're in there, and they can't craft draw cards or extort anybody. They have to kind of leave, basically lose a turn, but without having to fully lose a turn. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the idea of it. The artwork is solid. The quality of the game is solid. You, you can see that they put a lot of time and effort into making this game. It's going to have its ups and downs. This game can be very close. It can be very far off. It just really depends on how useful you make all of your actions count. Sometimes choosing to make both of your actions take you to a location is better than not doing that because a die roll is random happenstance or is uh, moving specifically to a location even if it costs you two of those will get you where you need to go and when playing the team variant there's ways of changing that with the gangs that you join making sure that you cooperate with your other gang members to get your stuff out of the yard or out of anywhere else that you build and place them back in here and yeah I just really enjoy this game this is a lot of fun now like I said the main thing about it is it's going to be swingy and and that's just part of this type of game the cards you draw are are going to be very random and unique and different. Some of them are going to be worth only two cigarettes, while others can be worth up to six. But how you use them to craft is also something that can be of importance. Being able to use them to also join gangs is going to be important, and you have just a lot of variety, a lot of options. But in essence, the game is very, very simple. 
which is very, very nice. Now, of course, because of the theme of this game and kind of what's going on here, there is a drug-related content to this game. There is violence. The 16 plus is probably about right, in my opinion. So uh, if you are a parent or uh, if you're a younger kid that is watching this video, this may or may not be for the younger audience if you're kind of squeamish about them doing something involving gangs and, and uh, uh, combat, that, that type of thing. But if you don't mind the theme and you like the idea of a simple-to-play game with some unique combat and tactics and choices that you make, then this is going to be a really solid choice. I had a lot of fun with both the different game modes, and uh, it worked really well. Um, my, my only negatives, like I said, other than being swingy, is you have to remember in, in the rulebook there is a chart as well as on the board here that tells you how many different uh, symbols that you need, and it's kind of hard to see them because there's items over the number. So just remember to look at the chart on the very far right hand side. I forgot to do that during our first playthrough of the game. Um, and so you're not gonna actually need a whole lot. I thought in that playthrough that it was going to be, oh, how do you get into a gang? Well, that's actually really easy. And in fact, joining either any type of gang is not really hard. One allows you to have lots of options, but it's going to require you more op more more of the different cards. Whereas these ones require you require less, but more specific types of cards. Um, that, but other than that, it's pretty 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 straightforward. Yeah, if you want to take a look at the game, dig your way out. You can go ahead and check out the link down below in the description. We had a ton of fun with this game, and if you're loving the theme and you like a combat game that's pretty simple and straightforward, pick this game up. There you go, that's my review. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Dig Your Way Out by Borderline Editions. If you're interested in picking up the game up, there's a link down below in the description. You can also go ahead and check out our website unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We do greatly appreciate it when you do that. Hit that like, comment, and subscribe button to see more videos just like this one. Make sure that the notification button as well. If you don't do that, then you might not get notified of our next videos. We have a live streams every Wednesday and every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, where you can see us play games on Twitch, just like this one. Sometimes we play video games, which is on Wednesdays. Other times it's board games, which is on Sundays. A new PC is arriving next week. It's just when we're gonna be jumping into the video game side, which is on Wednesdays. But every Sunday we're always playing games um, um, and we've played this one before, so you know. I'll have a link in the description for all the games that are currently, the uh, playthroughs that we played, but remember the first one has some rules, uh, errors in it, involving the, a little bit of the movement, a little bit of how combat works, and the, the board here, uh, gathering for dig eggs. Anyway, that's all I got for you this time. As always, I look forward to digging my way out without you next time.